What kind of snow makes the best conditions for dog sledding? Well, in today's episode, we'll find out. Hello, welcome to another episode of Massachusetts. I'm your host, Bob Tremblay, and here's my better half, Carrie Tremblay. And so today, as we have some freshly falling snow, we are going to address a subscriber's question. What is the best kind of snow for dog sledding? And my big smile is because it's snowing and it's beautiful <laughs> and I was just playing with the dogs, which is amazing. Yeah. One of our subscribers recently asked us about what kind of snow is the best for dog sledding. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's more complicated than just what kind of snow. There's really a whole bunch of conditions that kind of factor into that. And so today, as we're getting this freshly fallen snow, it seems like the perfect time to, um, to address that question. So the first thing is that what you really need is you need a good base. And the base really starts with the ground. So what you're looking for for good conditions for dog sledding is you want to have a good cold fall. Like around November, certainly into early December, you need the ground to start freezing. And you need that frozen ground so that the ground is cool and will hold that first um, base layer of snow. So then, once you have like your frozen ground, you get your first base layer, which is kind of what we're getting right now. Um, this has been a very unusual winter. We just have not been getting the kind of snow that the rest of the country has been getting. So here we are, um, first week of January, and we've had snow come and then melt away and then come and then melt away and then come and then get rained away. So just yesterday, actually this morning, everything was still grass covered. So in all essence, this is like the, this is a, a base layer kind of coming down now. So your base is what fills in all the voids and covers all the sticks and all the rocks that can interfere with your runners. So you need that first base layer. Hopefully if the ground is cold and if temp and you get a good base layer, that base layer acts like a blanket and then keeps the ground cold and the cold ground keeps the base layer there. And then hopefully that lasts the entire season. And then all your successive snowfalls that kind of fall on top of that, just add and improve the track. So then the question comes, once, let's just kind of say we've got a good base. What's the best kind of snow? Well. Your real dry, fluffy snow, uh, when it's really deep, that can be kind of difficult for the dogs to push through. And it can also be difficult for your sled. If you have a, uh, like a sprint type of sled with runners, that's gonna weigh down in the deep snow and the dogs just gonna be kind of pulling it through like a plow. And if the snow is too deep, the dogs are gonna have a hard time kind of pushing through it. So you don't really need much depth. Um, once you have that depth, once the snow falls, then you need it to settle. So once it settles, and instead of being, you know, billions and billions of flakes, it ends up forming into a solid or a consistent mass, a snowpack. Well, then, then you can start running your dogs on it. You can start running a sled on it. So the best, uh, you know, the worst conditions are when you have uh, snow down and then you get like that frozen kind of cruddy ice on top of it. So when your dogs are running, they're pushing through that crud. I mean, they can cut the webbing between their toes. Um, the sled is kind of crunching through. I think that's about the worst. Um, but once you have some snow down and you have a snow pack, what you really want is you want that um, trail to be packed. I'm very fortunate in that we have a lot of snowmobile trails around here. So once the snow falls, usually the snowmobiles get out. I usually wait a day to let the snowmobiles get out and do their, do their work. And to me, they're basically grooming trails for, for dog sledding. So that really helps to pack things down and provides the glide that the sleds want. Um, another thing that I don't like is uh, we also have a lot of four-wheelers will go off onto the, onto the snow tracks and they'll be on the snowmobile trails, which they really shouldn't be. And unfortunately, the, uh, the four-wheelers, their tire tracks are just narrow enough that the sled can't fit between it. And also the people with the, um, the four-wheelers, they tend to ride all over the place. So they don't tend to follow a nice, consistent trail um, the way the snowmobiles do. But um, good conditions are when you have, uh, the colder it is, the happier the dogs are. Um, they're happier when it's 20 degrees than when it's 30. They're happier when it's zero than when it's 20. So the colder, the better. Um, 
and also just to having a good uh, a good base that kind of covers everything over and then a good pack on top of that so the sled will run smoothly um, last year we didn't have much snow depth and so I was finding a lot of success running across open lakes uh, the open lakes had just enough snow that actually the snow got packed down by the wind and by going across the level lakes I didn't have um, things were nice and even and level and I didn't have a whole lot of rocks and things underneath so that works so anyway um, but I would say the single most important thing for conditions for snow for dog sledding is you just need coverage uh, you don't need you don't need five feet of snow you just need like maybe half a foot and you just need consistent coverage that's just covering everything so that your sled can kind of run freely you don't have to worry about hitting rocks don't have to worry about hitting sticks don't have to worry about dragging across sand or snow or uh, or pebbles or things like that so um, good coverage is what's most important for dogs for dog sledding Thanks for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and like the video. And if you are my trivia peeps, thanks for watching and I'll see you at trivia. And we'll see you guys next time on the trail.